That's what I thought. Yeah, wounds. If you're heavily wounded, which you are, it's three wounds or less, uh, mm. you are healing at a rate of one wound per day. So, yes, uh, you, Lando, and Draken are in pretty rough shape, but uh, yeah. it's up to you guys how to approach it. But uh, starting out, you are in the tavern here. Mm -hmm. uh, probably in one of the side rooms or in in your own personal room, what have you. And I'll show this to you. Marguerite is determined to turn her bodyguard into true, proper men that are worthy of being in her employ. The first step, teaching these former brigands how to read and write. So I'm not sure how you would have it set up, but I'm assuming that you're sort of schooling them on etiquette and other things, and this this is just something that comes up that uh, they have no clue how to do. Before going into uh, even reading or writing, I talk to them. I tell them that you will be accompanying me to go meet a man of noble status. So you must be on your best behavior. As such, I expect you to have your mouths closed, but your eyes open. If you don't know what's going on or what to do, just follow my lead. And then she uh, she goes into the basic things like when you meet the noble, when I bow, you bow, like stand behind me but not too far. The whole uh, how to bow, you know. And uh, but uh, the thing that Marguerite didn't notice is that she's teaching them all the Bretonian way how to do it, mm -hmm. not the Empire way. So it's gonna lead to some, lead to some weird uh, stuff going on, but. She, you know, she's trying. I mean, every time it's like, no, 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 no. Have your back straight. Your back straight. And just like, like slapping them and saying, that's not how you do it. If you did that, you would be shit. <laughs> like, she was just like getting more and more into it. All right. So let's, uh, we'll test intelligence and see if they, they're okay. getting this correctly. Oh. No, they're. They have no idea. They're so they're. I mean, they're they're going through the motions, sort of. But it's you can tell that they're. <laughs> they're not perhaps taking it as seriously as they need to be. Like one's doing very deep curtsies and like making stupid faces while he does it, and you know they're sort of sniggering between each other. Um, <laughs> and one of them uh, at one point. So we're doing all this. Uh, when are we gonna rob him? Why would we rob him? I thought that uh, we we was gonna rob nobles. That's what they're good for, isn't it? Having lots of coin to take. When you rob a noble, you close that door, and you'll never be able to get gold from him again. But get on his good side, and he'll open his coffers like a dirty whore opening her legs. And then we can rob him. Uh, if it's opportune, then yes. Perhaps, depending on the situation, we may rob him. But trust me, you're used to eating shit, but if you do things my way, you'll be eating gold. Oh, no, I like holding gold, not eating it. It's, um, it's a figure of speech. So, uh, he sort of scratching his head. So we we do all this noble like stuff, and uh, and you do all the talking, right? All you have to do is stand there and look pretty. No oh, hell, I could do that. When we beat him, you he may look at you unfavorably. I'm paying you not only to be my gaudy bodyguard, but also my representatives. So please, act like gentlemen, just this once. Oh yeah, we'll be on our best behavior. Good. And then Margarita starts preparing everything that she needs. You know, uh... And, uh, while she... and then she, she has an idea, ah! While we're on the road, I'll have give you a little bit of work. And then she takes out her writing kit and two papers. She writes out the Bretonian alphabet, you know, like A, B, C. Mm -hmm. And she passes them to each of them. And it's like, 
while we're there, while we're on our way there, I expect you to learn every single letter. And they're looking at the papers. Uh, which ones are the letters? They're all letters. Oh. oh. And she, she, while she's there, she'll go over them like this is A, B, and maybe do this, maybe do the song, the alphabet song. <laughs> Uh, all right, go ahead and um. So, to teach them, we'll we'll, we'll do this. Just the letters. Yeah. To, to, so to teach them, it, it would it would factor in to teach them how to no. how to read. So we'll what you would do is you would test your reading and writing skill. And, base. Uh, yes, you would you would teach yeah. your reading and writing skill base, and this would happen over a period of weeks, basically. Okay. So that you, this is your first one. This this is your this <laughs> week of it. So, whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Damn it! Mm. So that's that's a failure, but it's over a period of time, so you can test this yeah. for as long as you want to try to teach these guys to read and write. You can test it, mm -hmm. and uh, when you hit five so, successes, they will become trained in reading and writing. So, like once per week, then. Yes. And then, what about the etiquette? How long would that take? Etiquette. So, if you want to, do you have? Is that a skill, or is there something that that is re like related to that? Uh, like, uh, look at your. No, I don't think so. Not really. I mean, like noble etiquette, because like I said, they. Etiquette um, actually charm. is a skill. Um, really? Yeah, there is. Well, it's not a skill, but it is a talent, I believe. I think etiquette is oh. a talent. It could be also a performance thing. Let me take a look. Well, how are you going to teach etiquette if you don't know? Yeah, no. that's right. Um, <laughs> let me take a look here. Well, not not etiquette. Like, I don't know, like, the titles and the hierarchy. I mean, just to not make a fool of yourself. Like, how to bow properly, who you can look in the eye of, who you can't look in the eye of, you know. The most basic of basics. Yeah, let me take a Hmm. Yeah, et etiquette is a, is a talent. Uh, so I would say oh that you have to have that talent. Like, I'm not saying that you're you're not uh, to teach it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. So we could. I'll just teach them how to read and write then. All right. So we will go to the estate. <clears throat> Gothard gave you directions to Hartwig's estate, but he probably wouldn't have needed to bother. Signs and criers <coughs> proudly proclaim this as his humble abode. Nearly a quarter of a block is taken up by this monument to opulence, and what seems like a small army patrols the grounds. A few guards standing watch at the main gate eye you with suspicion. Um, but you set sent advance word, I'm assuming. And... Yeah, of course. Well, probably Lando did. Yeah. So they, they, you know, once you give your credentials and everything, they're they're sort of like eyeing up your two uh, bodyguards. Yeah. That's right. They're still wearing their uh, their banditry stuff. Yeah, well, they're yeah, they're basically in rags. Like yeah. They're, they're just have to fix them in the future. A leather jerkin and some and some rags and a hood and all that other. Mhm. Mm but yeah, they they acquiesce and uh, escort you to Lord Mombert Hartwig's study, <laughs> and the man is mm -hmm. there and. uh for you, it's probably a, uh, a good, pleasant sight. He is about as fat as they come in this world. He is pretty big. Mm. I think kingpin size. Oh, Wilson Fisk. And Dang. He, yeah, and he's, sit he's sort of sitting on a couch that looks entirely too small for him and taking up almost the length of the couch. Mm. Looks at you and he's like, Oh, uh, you must be, uh, what was it? Marguerite de Bonneville? Yes, my lord. It is an honor that you remember my name. Oh, well. They told me who was being sent over. 
I have a good ear for names. Please, come sit. Come sit. And he... He thinks about patting the, the couch next to him, but he, he offers uh, chairs across from him. So I, I take my seat where he, uh, at the chair. And he's, his face sort of scrunches up at the, uh, the, the bodyguards. And he's, uh, would you and your, uh, your men like something to eat or drink? We've got quite a um, lot around here. <laughs> I, I, um, perhaps my men would enjoy a small snack. And I look at them and say, and I give them like a, a head nod, like, go ahead and eat. Oh, yeah, we ain't eating lunch yet, if you wouldn't mind, sir. Of course, but remember, mind your manners. Hey, you got any, uh, you got any pork? And he looks at them sort of weird and looks at you. Yes, I think we might. And he claps his hands and a couple of servants that were off to the side run off quickly. It is a thankless task running this estate, I must say. Servants, it takes, very slow. It takes a man great as you to keep such a business running. Oh, you flatter me, but but yes, yes, it is. It is a tough task to keep the lumbering company and all my own holdings in order sometimes. The rest of my family should be so appreciative. <coughs> and rather quickly the servants return. And uh, one of them even brings out a small table and places it in front of you. And uh, full plates. And he says, yes, a, a few small portions, but these are not small portions. Like your bodyguard are in heaven right now. Hmm. Okay. This is probably the most food they've ever seen in their lives. <laughs> and they are, uh, their table manners are not spectacular, but maybe a little bit better <clears throat> than you expected. <clears throat> They're not, like, smearing the food all over themselves. So. I thank you for this gracious gift of food, and I know that my men are quite honored that you would treat them to such. But, as I am a woman of business, and I am here for business, may we talk about such? Oh, so, so quickly, I was more interested in hearing about you for some time. Oh, well, of course, you may ask your question, and I will do my best to answer. Hey, recognize you as a woman of Bretonia. Are you... Of a noble house there, by chance? Hmm. No. Once, a long time ago, my family had claims nobility. But, in the recent times, we have fell to a lower status. Uh, I see difficult times, I'm sure, in Britonia. What with yes. all the you know, orc invasions and the whole affair with the undead. Ugh. Quite trying time. But thank you for caring about my nation. Most know not of its woes. That's, oh, I have business all over. I have a few good friends, contacts in Bretonian. I would hate to see them perish in, in such violence. I mean, it has like a, a thing of grapes that he's picking from. Them. Like a Roman style? Yeah, so he's got a, he's got sort of a Roman... Uh, he's not, like, sitting there with the, the thing over his... You know, holding up over his head and doing it. He's got people, like, handing him full things of grapes, and he's eating them and pausing and talking. <laughs> and what brought you into the company of such... Uh, and he looks at both of the men with you. Esteemed men of the Empire. Hmm. Well... There are some things that I need to be done, you know, family business and whatnot. To be honest, sometimes the academics and nobles of Bretonia 
have difficulty being able to complete certain tasks. I find that while you, while I may be in the company of men of more violent nature, I assure you that I am and will never deal with the criminal element. So worry not. You are safe, and as long as you deal with me, no harm shall come to any of your business. He sort of looks side-eyed at that. Bretonian etiquette must be different than Empire etiquette. That, uh, I must say, sounded a tad bit threatening, Miss Bourneville. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I meant, in the Bretonian manner, that I do not turn on my employees. I never have, and I never will. I apologize if it sounds like a threat since most Empire people can't hold such loyalty in their hearts. But trust in me, and your trust shall always be rewarded. No, yes, yes, of course, of course. Now, you had some business you wanted to bring to me today. Yes, the gutter blade contract on, upon who I am representing. Yes, he... How goes it? Well, there has been some developments that I believe you should know about. What uh, developments do you speak of? Well, for one, your lumbermen have all been slaughtered. He almost chokes on his grapes. Slaughtered? By what? Mm -hmm. Wolves? Now, do I have... now? Did, I know I, I said it in last session, but we brought what corpses did we bring, or what did we, like the zombie, or? You guys brought quite a few. I would assume you brought the zombie, because that's the most compelling. Okay, so I ask, um, my dear men, would you please search and bring back the fellow that we brought with us? Aye, and you, you probably would have maybe brought a sack yeah. or something. And uh, he comes up and looks around, and he's you know he's sort of forgetting where they're at for a minute. But he's like, ah, uh, should we just throw him on the floor? Hmm. No, that would be too. Just pull him out of the sack gently, and let the noble man here lay his eyes upon it. The uh, Hartwig's kind of startled and looking around, and. So you're, you're uh, chosen that lays it on the ground as he's sort of grimacing as he does it and starts slowly pulling the, the man out of the sack, the, the dead man that had come mm -hmm. back. And uh, this is not the one that Mad Mark is completely obliterated. This is another one. No. And, uh, Recognizable features, yeah. Yeah, he pulls it out. And <laughs> it's It's looking decayed, but not... You know, not like it's been dead for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's obviously marked up and wounded from the fight, and several mortal wounds even, but. And the uh, heart looks like, my goodness. What is. It appears that your property is dealing with a few undead issues. How... How did... I recognize this man, how... When... He started, like, starting to hyperventilate a bit, and he... Please, put, put it away, put it away. Put it away, please. He, the man has seen enough. And he... You know, he guy covers the corpse and... Puts the bag behind the, uh... The place where you're sitting, and then goes back to eating without mm -hmm. even cleaning off his hands. Mm -hmm. Now... The contract that you for us to do and complete was to find out what was harassing your lumbering business and to take care of it. Well, sadly, since the circumstances have changed, the contract too must... And he sort of stops hyperventilating at that point, because now we're talking money again. And he... mm -hmm. Oh, 
I see. So... Yeah. Let us remove the fluff from this meeting then, Miss Bonneville. This is a shakedown then, isn't it? Well, a shakedown would imply that I am making unreasonable demands. And I assure you that my demands are quite acceptable. What is your starting offer for renegotiation, then? That seems fair well, to you. Not only is it is the men, and well, you could hardly call them men, but these fiends that we must deal with, not the common animals that were implied, but... They are also of a magic nature, which, of course, you must understand, is quite difficult and requires a specialist. These are going to be extra costs for not only me, but the company. And having undead roaming on your land is considered to be quite suspicious to the people of Sigma. So, I will make the very reasonable, very acceptable deal of triple the original contract. His eyes go wide. Triple? Yes, triple. Mm. One for being undead, and another one for having to deal with magic. As such, the triple. And if I refuse your kind offer? Well, then we'd be forced to tell... ...own for being logical and understanding. You may find yourself in a quite the precarious situation. You'd be lucky if you were even allowed to keep a single business. You cut out for a minute, so I'm assuming you brought the whole witch hunter and... Yeah, and, uh, the, the, the... They cut out? Sorry about that. No, it might have been my internet, I don't know. But yeah, so okay. I, yeah, I get where you're going with it. Yeah, and I told him, like, you'd be lucky to even have any of his businesses left. You underestimate my influence, lady. I know quite a few of those in the Sigmarite Church, and between you and me, I pay quite a few of them, too. Yes, but there's, isn't there always some apprentice or initiate trying to find any way to climb the rank? I'm sure they would be quite willing to deal with the Gutter Blades. And he sort of sits up, and he's a, he's a pretty tall guy when he's sitting in his full height. He looks at you. What say double the initial offer? And I uh, don't harass you and your company with every bit of legal finery that I could come up with until the end of time. Double? Hmm. Double on track, but I wonder. Let's say I accept. What is there to say that you won't just do what you said you'd do? Find every way to rule. I mean, I'm not saying that you are, but I found many men of power to be vengeful. If you wish, you can go around the city and ask other men of power how I am to deal with and I assure you most if not all would say that I am a man of my word hmm double the original and of course mm -hmm. your assurance that this would not this conversation and your findings would not leave this room then I will add a single condition, and the deal will be sealed. 
What condition? You must tell all the men of power that you claim to be so well connected to that the gutter blades did a perfection of a job and that you suggest that they hire us. Then he smirks and says, you have a deal, good lady. Then I take, take out my hand for a shake. He stands up and sort of waddles over and, and takes it more in a manner of um, holding a lady's hand than, than shaking it. He winks at you. Hmm. Well, I have other business to attend to now that that is finished, if you do not mind. Your men may take the scraps of that, if they are not finished. Yep. And uh, Marguerite stands, or orders her men to take the uh, corpse back, and leaves. And uh, one of your men takes a... Uh turkey leg with him <laughs> and if unless you want to do anything else I think that would be it yeah that's basically it <laughs>